Good morning, class. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. Faith School is the place where my spirit is fed, where my faith grows stronger, and where I learn how to be an overcomer. And the way you're an overcomer, the scripture said, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And our faith is not just uh, this mystical, unknowable thing. It, it operates on known principles. It's similar to a strength in your body. It must be fed. It needs to be exercised to develop. And when we're talking about faith, we're not just talking about faith in faith. We're talking about faith in God. And faith in God is based on what he told you. It's trust in what he said, and which is why we, are, we take everything back to his word. And so get your Bible. If you don't have one, uh, go ahead and get you one. It, it, it's important. It's a priority. And, and get something to make a note with because the Lord will speak to you during these times and, uh, and write it down or make a note somehow. And let's believe to get answers today. Father, all of us, agree together as touching this, asking you for the anointing that teaches, reveals, reminds, even shows us things to come, asking you for the gifts and manifestations of your Holy Spirit uh, that can do what no, no human can do, asking you for answers and help in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. We begin um, first part of the week talking about the individual cases in the book of Acts. And we saw in Acts 1.1, if you know, want to notice that again, that Luke, uh, who penned this, he said, Acts 1.1, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began, began both to do and to teach. So all those Healing accounts that we studied in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, those 20 that we studied, um, they are not the end of something. They are the beginning of something. And what you'll see the Spirit of God saying through Luke in this first verse, what you're about to read in the book of Acts is a continuation of what Jesus began. Hallelujah. And that you could actually call this book the Acts of of the Holy Spirit through the church. And thank God the Holy Spirit's still in the church. And these kind of things are still happening to those that believe. We saw in the second chapter of Acts, uh, the Holy Spirit came and there were actually even sign manifestations in addition to them being filled with the Spirit and speaking in other tongues. There was the uh, wind that blew in, there were the flames of fire that they saw, there were uh, many people who heard them speaking in tongues but understood them in their languages. And so this was a sign to them. And when the crowds gathered because of this sign, Peter preached to them and 3,000 some people got saved in one day. Hallelujah. And the church is off and running. Is that right? And, um, you know, filled with the Spirit and excited and um, the Holy Spirit and fire, I should say. And 3,000 new converts added to the church. That's off to a good start. And the next thing that happens, chapter 3. Let's begin reading again. Chapter 3. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of of prayer, being the ninth hour, three o'clock in the afternoon. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the temple, which is called Beautiful, 
to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us, look at us. And he gave heed to them, expecting to receive something uh, of them. Then Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he that sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened to him. What a miracle. Hallelujah. Let's talk a little bit about this this phrase, phrases that, that Peter spoke to the man when he said, uh, first of all, they're, they're going into the, up to the temple. They're going to pray the way they, they do on a regular basis for an hour at least. And uh, the man sees them, Peter and John, and he asks for a mercy or a kindness from them. And uh, Peter and John is with him, hooked with him, look at him and say, look here, look at us. And he looked up at them, expecting to get some money, expecting to get something from them. And Peter said, "Uh, silver and gold have I none. Now I've seen uh, uh, modern translations, they really take off with that phrase. And they say, uh, uh, they'll, they'll change the words up and say that uh, Peter said, I don't have a dime in the world. <laughs> That's not what he said. And, and it's this, you know, holiness is, is broke and brokenness is holiness uh, idea, which is not the word. And uh, that's not what he said. He knows the man is expecting to get some silver or gold. And so he said, um, silver and gold have I none. The, the word there have is, means existent or to be ready at hand. In other words, he's saying, I don't have any on me. And uh, that doesn't mean the man had nothing. We, we know better than that. He has, a, he has a family. He had a business, right? And when he traveled with Jesus, they were well taken care of. They had enough money that uh, Judas uh, embezzled, and they still had money. And they gave to the poor and still had money. No, see, don't let this junk creep in and contaminate your thinking. Uh, what he's saying is... Uh, Um, the rest of the phrase. The man's looking at him and he knows he's expecting money. And he said, silver and gold, I don't have ready at hand. I don't have any on me. Uh, For all we know, uh, Mrs. Peter could have had the pocketbook (laughs) that day. I mean, it's happened to me before. (laughs) And I'm like, I I don't have my wallet. (laughs) Doesn't mean I'm homeless. Right? Right? Doesn't mean I got no money for a meal. Uh, they, they, they laugh about me because I, I got so much good help that uh, a lot of times I don't carry uh, money on me. And uh, I'm so blessed that I can just, you know, <laughs> uh, things are taken care of. And, and if I need to, I know how to get some. But... Uh, that, that could have very well been the case with Peter. He's like, you know, I don't have my pocketbook. Besides that, I got something better for you. Right? 
silver and gold I don't have ready at hand is a literal translation. I, I don't have at hand. I don't have on me. But what I have, I'm, I'm going to give you. What I have. And that, that word is a different word. What I have is the word hold. I'm holding something. Hallelujah. And this was not a natural thing. This is something silver and gold couldn't buy. This is something beyond the value of silver and gold. I'm, I'm holding something here for you. And he said, such as I have, give I thee. Hallelujah. And I want to, uh, to stop and take note that, remind you, they laid this man daily at the gate. And uh, Peter and John went up daily for the hour of prayer. So they likely, in all probability, have walked by this man many times. Why didn't they do this yesterday? Why didn't they do it last week? Why didn't they do it a month ago? I'm talking about why didn't they grab him by the hand and say, rise, get up? Why didn't they do that? Because... They didn't have it. Such as I, I have. If he'd have had it the day before, he could have ministered it the day before. What do you mean? Nothing is said about this man being healed on his faith. You will not hear the phrase, your faith has made you whole. Talking to the man. Now it was faith. And we're going to look at it more in detail in, in, a, in a bit. But uh, it wasn't the man's faith. He's expecting some money. And that's why Peter says, silver and gold I don't have on me. But I've got something. Oh, somebody said I've got something. I've got something. I've got something. Did, he, did they have something they didn't have yesterday? Or the day, obviously, obviously, the, the Spirit of God quickened something to him, gave something to him. And that's why he so boldly acts on this. Notice what he did. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, such as I'm holding, give I you. And then he ministers it to him. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he didn't wait for him to respond. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Then he didn't, he didn't just wait and let the man get up by faith. Uh-uh. He reaches out and grabs him by the, the right hand and lifts him up. Just as he, he spoke that to him. And immediately... His feet and ankle bones receive strength, and then he's leaping and walking and praising God. This is a gift of the Spirit. This is, I believe, what 1 Corinthians 12 refers to as faith or special faith. There, the Scripture talks about common faith or mutual faith. And that's a faith that comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. That's not what happened here because they're not preaching and teaching. They're just walking into the temple. Come on, can you see that? Yes. And the man is not hearing something from their preaching that's giving him faith. It wasn't his faith. And yet, when they walked, they walked up there and he said, Alms for the poor, alms for the poor. They looked at him, the Spirit of God dropped it in them. Yes. Oh, come on, can you see that? The Spirit of God dropped a faith in them that was beyond their faith. Yes. Oh, come on, can you see that? Yes. It's what's known in the 1 Corinthians 12 as we call it special faith. Weymouth, I believe, calls it special faith. Special faith, a faith that was beyond their faith. And now uh, it, it hit John too. It was on both of them. Peter was doing the talking, 
But both of them were in this together because it said Peter, you know, uh, and John with him. They're together on this. The Lord dropped this on them. And that's why they're so bold. They're so bold because they got something. They know. They're sure. And he reached up. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up. Get up. And he grabbed him by the hand and just jerked him up. And when he did that, something happened in the man's ankles and feet. It's possible you could have heard it. You might have heard bones moving or, or, or even being formed. Whatever was missing from birth was put in there. Whatever was deficient was made right, was made complete. After 40 years, 40 years of not being able to take a step. And you know the man tried, how many times had he tried to make those ankles and feet work and they wouldn't work. And he had to literally be carried from place to place. He couldn't even hobble along. He couldn't do anything. He couldn't make a step. But in a moment of time, the power of God created, restored body parts. Do we believe in a God that still can do such things? Do we? Does he want to do such things? I mean, God could have gotten the attention of the city through a different sign. Why does he, do, does he use signs like this? And this is not the only occasion. We're going to see this happen again and again, these kind of things. Uh, different ways, but still healings and deliverances. He could do a, a million other things that would have been a, 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 an astonishing sign, and yet it wouldn't have had to been a healing. Why does he keep doing healings? Why? Because he cares. I said he cares about people hurting. He wants uh, human beings to understand it's not his will for you to be infirm or to have deformities or in, unable to live a normal and, and, and healthy, enjoyable life. He is a good God. Yes. And these things are not of him. These things are resulting of sin and curse. And they're, they're not him. He creates everything beautiful, everything complete. When he made creation, he would step back and go, that's good. Right? That's good. That's very good. Right? Perfect. Complete. Good. And anything that happened to the human body, contrary to his original design, that deforms, weakens, kills, destroys, that does not please him. That's not an improvement on his creation. He made it the way he wanted it to be, and he is able to restore it to the way it's supposed to be. And that's what he did right here. Can you say amen? amen. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand, lifted him up, Immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Uh, skip on down to verse 11. As the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together in, unto them in the porch that's called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered to the people, You men of Israel, why marvel ye at this? Or why look you so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? So here, the Spirit of God through Peter dispels this idea that the disciples had the power to heal. And, and when the last one of them died, all of that ceased. Peter says adamantly, it was not by our power that I have as an apostle or a holiness that I have because of who I am. He said, the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son Jesus. Not glorified the apostles. Right? Glorified Jesus. Does God still exist? Does he still want to glorify Jesus? Yes, yes. 
whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. You denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted to you. And you killed the Prince of Life, whom God has raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. You know, they saw him and touched him physically after he was raised from the dead. Had a meal with him, or more than one. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong whom you see and know. And I want you to notice the next phrase describes what we said earlier. Uh, Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Now see, common faith comes by hearing. This faith didn't come by hearing. Class, are y'all are y'all awake? Didn't come by hearing. Now you got to remember, they weren't teaching and preaching here, uh, coming into the temple that day, and it didn't say the man heard the word and got faith. We're going to see that in another account here, just right away. It's going to be the other side of this. It did come that way, but uh, not here. The faith, which is what, by him. By is the, the channel that it came through. It, the, the faith in the name, and it was Peter and John that initiated this, not the man. And it was because the Holy Spirit dropped it on them. And so they boldly acted their faith by commanding that and grabbing his hand and pulling him up. And that faith came by him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As the Spirit wills, He gives these things. And the more we'll pray and, and seek Him and, and be open, the more of it we'll have. But it was something that not only met the man's need, but I mean it was a sign that shook the whole city. I mean, have you read the chapters following this? I mean, they, the Sanhedrin had meetings over it. I mean, it was... Uh, and um, thousands more got saved. Hallelujah. Somebody say thousands more. Thousands more. Uh, it says in the fourth chapter that as a result of that, uh, that the, the crowd, excuse me, the, the believers grew to 5,000. So there must have been about an additional 2,000 that came in as a result of this healing. We've had two signs and 5,000 converts. Woo! And people say, we don't need this today. I think we do need this today. Don't you? Don't you? Two signs and 5,000 people in the church. New ones. Oh, and the Lord adding daily, such as should be saved. Praise God. Say, say Lord, we, we seek that again. We ask for more of this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. But I want you to back up. And notice, uh, when this man saw, verse 3, Peter and John about to go into the temple to ask an alms, Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. It's interesting that a few verses later, he said, why are you looking at us? <laughs> look on us, to the lame man. And then after the man was healed, he said, to the other folks, why are you looking at us? So look on us to minister the healing. Don't look at us as though we did it. Right? It was the Lord that did it through them. And uh, so then he gave heed to them expecting to receive something. Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John. You know, the, the eyes are the windows to the inner man. And uh, you actually can contact a person's spirit through their eyes. And um, the scripture said, the, Jesus said, the light of the body is the eye. I thought this was interesting in, in Job uh, uh, 29 and 24. In the Amplified, he said, I smiled on them 
when they had no confidence. And their depression did not cast down the light of my countenance. The NIV says it like this, the light of my face was precious to them. The light, what did the lame man see when he looked into Peter and John's eyes? And the Spirit of God has dropped this on them and in them. See, we, we, we know the miracle that happened, the manifestation, but how did it get from him sitting there lame like he's always been all his life? How do you get from there to the next, the next part, the next step? And it was this, look at us, look here, look here. And the man looked up, expecting to get some money. But he saw something in Peter's eyes that he hadn't seen before. Man, there was some fire. There's some, whoo, what's going on here? And there was the, the uh, you know, pain of the man's situation for 40 years did not depress Peter and John, but the light in their eyes called for the man to come up and come out of this darkness and this disability. Oh, come on, can you see that? The light of their eyes quickened him, encouraged him. So something happened in him that he didn't fight them. You know, uh, there are situations where people would have said, oh, oh, leave me alone. And they would have been fra- afraid and they don't know what's going on. But he didn't fight it. He saw the, the light in Peter's eyes and face and in John's eyes and face. And when he said, get up in the name of Jesus Christ, get up. And he grabbed him by the hand. Uh, something in the man was going, okay, uh-huh, all right, here we go. And that light, well, how many of you know that light's in you too? Yes. Is it? Yes. You are the light of the world. Yes. That light is in you too. Yes. And instead of letting people's situation bog you down and darken you and take away your joy, you're the light in your heart and eyes and face is to encourage them and call them to come up and to come out and that it is possible to be free. Hallelujah. And our time's up again. Said out loud, class, I live by faith. I walk by faith. I overcome the world by faith. I'm strong in faith, giving glory to God. There's a lot more to see here. Come back with us tomorrow. We'll see you soon back here in Faith School. I've got the victory living inside. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.